Well, we've been discussing this uh, for months. I, I, I think uh, Senator Schumer, who has been uh, perhaps the strongest supporter of uh, Israel in the U.S. Senate, uh, certainly one of them, uh, made uh, very direct and uh, correct observations about the extreme state of affairs. And it's uh, important for us to note today another report that came out of a, a international intergovernmental group uh, that tracks famine and hunger. Uh, this is a report of the Integrated Food Security Phase Classification. People can find it online. It's IPC. This, this is the report that you sent me earlier today. E exactly. And it says that uh, projected for the period 16 March to 15 July, uh, 1.1 billion people will be in the most uh, extreme catastrophic dimension of uh, hunger. Uh, meaning that they're starving to death more than a, a million people during this phase right now. The situation is absolutely dramatic. The uh, Israeli government is absolutely criminal. Uh, the International Court of Justice will find these actions genocidal. Uh, the only words I would have changed uh, of uh, Senator Schumer uh, would be to say, uh, therefore, the United States will immediately stop all munitions, all backing for this murderous rampage of this extremist government. He didn't say that. I don't actually like uh, Americans calling for change of other countries' governments. I like well, us. You've, you've spent a career opposing yes. that. <laughs> I, I, I like us standing up and saying what we will do. We as a nation, we will not be complicit in genocide. We will not be complicit in mass starvation. We will not be complicit in mass murder. We will not stand by as American munitions are used for Israel to attack Rafa. That's the southern city of Gaza, uh, to which the Gaza population has been pushed by Israel. And now uh, Netanyahu, who is a war criminal, uh, says that Israel will attack Rafah, including uh, in the context of starving the people of Gaza. Uh, if we had international uh, honesty and justice, which we do not, the International Criminal Court uh, would be uh, indicting uh, Netanyahu as a war criminal. It's uh, plain as can be. Of course, that court is really uh, under the control of the U.S. and U.K., which unfortunately has a career of uh, supporting uh, murderous actions, uh, and uh, the ICC therefore doesn't take steps like that. The ICJ is a different matter. That's the International Court of Justice, and that has the case before it of Israel's uh, violation of the 1948 uh, Genocide Convention. And I think everything Israel does each day makes it more likely that the ICJ will soon rule that Israel is uh, violating the Genocide Convention. Absolutely something unimaginable, shocking, dismaying, uh, profoundly wrong. But uh, the fact of the matter is uh, what uh, the strongest supporter of Israel said in the Senate is accurate. This is an absolutely extremist, uh, out of control government in Israel. It needs to be stopped from these murderous actions. The United States can do that without regime change, without toppling a government. It just has to stop the American munitions being sent to Israel right, right. essentially every day. We have uh, just posted on the screen the cover of the report that you gave. People should uh, look for this if they're interested in it. It's extremely detailed and it's heartbreaking uh, showing the uh, famine. Uh, Jeff, while uh, on the air yesterday, I received a text from a former student of mine from when I was a professor at Brooklyn Law School. He's Egyptian, Egyptian-American, a lawyer uh, in northern New Jersey. Uh, his cousin a 35-year-old pediatrician, head of pediatrics at the hospital in Gaza City, was 
uh, cut down by machine gun fire in a hospital room while attending to two children. A oh pediatrician yes. attending to children. Yes, because Israel has, it, Israel has systematically attacked uh, all the hospitals. It's blown up the universities. It's destroyed the schools. It's blown up the mosques. It's blown up the water supply. It's blown up the infrastructure. This has been a, a genocidal uh, action by the most extremist government in Israel's history. It you needs have, to stop. You have um, put your finger on the same thing that many of our colleagues on this show have, that uh, while Senator uh, Schumer stated truisms, he hasn't done anything about it. There need to be actions beyond the words. Now, you know Joe Biden is a Roman Catholic Zionist for 50 years. I don't know what will change his mind. And much of the aid that's been sent over there has been executive action. I don't know what the Congress has done, so I don't know what Schumer uh, can do. But knowing Schumer, as you and I do, he didn't say this on his own. I'm sure he ran this past the OPEC folks and probably past uh, some of his colleagues uh, in the Senate. They need to do something beyond these words. He started a conversation. My hat is off to him for that. But those um, cargo planes keep arriving over there every two or three days. We don't have uh, any presidential leadership on anything right now. We don't really know uh, President Biden's uh, state of mind or capacity uh, other than uh, when he is put before a teleprompter. Um, I'm very worried about it. The drift is not only with regard to Israel, it's in every crisis zone of the world right now. The crises are rising. Things are getting uh, absolutely out of hand. Uh, the rhetoric as well is over the top. There are immediate uh, dangers uh, in Ukraine of a massive uh, escalation. There are risks reported today, by the way, of U.S. troops on the ground uh, in Taiwan, uh, not on the main island, uh, offshore, quote unquote, training the Taiwanese army. Well, I can't express uh, in civil words what I would like to say about that, but I believe that we are adrift in foreign policy. I have long believed that this foreign policy team itself is incompetent and out of control, but I believe we don't have a, a president uh, in control right now also, because this is not isolated to Gaza. It's not a matter of uh, being a supporter or not of Israel. That's what Schumer showed, uh, because what we're dealing with is something different from a question of support for Israel. We're actually uh, witnessing something that could imperil Israel's own survival through its murderous behavior towards others. Uh, but the president, we don't see or have confidence that he is on top of any of this at so all. So who made the decision to send U.S. troops in uniform, combat troops, to this island, the small island off the coast of Taiwan? Well, I'll tell you, uh, the public hears nothing about any anything. Uh, I don't even know if this is being reported in the U.S. media. I picked it up in the Chinese media. Uh, and I don't really know, uh, but nothing about foreign policy is discussed, debated. Uh, the Senate Foreign Relations Committee is essentially moribund. The House Foreign Affairs Committee is essentially moribund. Uh, I don't have much confidence that it's uh, even the president making uh, any of these decisions. We don't know what's happening, but this is uh, absolutely a situation where we have multiple crises that are not in control. Uh, we have no explanations. We have no uh, intelligent, honest uh, public discussion of anything. Uh, and uh, we don't have uh, leadership. Why would the um, German intelligence uh, agency uh, engage in a conversation uh, suggesting that Russia wants to start World War III. Why would they leak something as preposterous and absurd 
uh, as that while NATO's on its last legs in Ukraine? This has been a long project uh, of the CIA and others uh, to bring Ukraine into uh, the U.S. Uh, orbit, as it were, to have uh, military bases uh, in Ukraine, to weaken Russia, to divide Russia, to defeat Russia, to have regime change in Russia. Uh, this has been a long, dangerous, reckless project. Uh, all my life, uh, I have uh, seen such reckless projects, uh, game playing uh, that aren't games at all because uh, hundreds of thousands or millions of people die from these games. And the German uh, intelligence is, of course, absolutely tightly knit with the U.S. Uh, we call it intelligence agency, but it is, as we always talk about, two completely different things. One is an intelligence agency, and the second is a, uh, a secretive, unaccountable army uh, right. that is an army of disruption. And so we don't have any clarity about these points right now. Uh, why is it that the chancellor of Germany said that they would not, Germany would not send long range Taurus missiles, and yet four of the generals of uh, the German army were caught on tape uh, saying how they were going to use these Taurus missiles? Uh, and I mean, they, the Germans, would use them to destroy the Crimean bridge absolutely contrary to what the German chancellor said. Uh, why is the French president now talking, and not just talking, saying that uh, he is sending troops to Ukraine? Where is the president of the United States uh, on something that could escalate to World War III? As I say, I don't know whether President Biden uh, is compass mentis uh, enough to know. Who knows? I I, I'm not saying I have any more information than any of us watching, but where is the president of the United States when uh, a major ally says we're sending, that they're sending troops to Ukraine? It's, mm. it's unbelievable how dangerous this period is. There are no clear goals. President Putin has said repeatedly we are open to negotiation, and the only response from wherever in the State Department or the White House or anywhere else is, uh, there's no one to negotiate with. And the Russians say, but we're here uh, to negotiate. No, there's no one to negotiate with. There's no diplomacy. There's no explanation. There's no leadership. There is no clarity. I'm sorry to say it. It's yeah. uh, I just can't well, recall if, if, when, a time like this. When Ukraine falls, and it appears that that's going to happen by June, will that not be the the moral equivalent, even the military equivalent, of Russia having defeated NATO? Well, the U.S. plan for Ukraine to join NATO was dead on arrival. Uh, it didn't have to be dead on arrival with 500,000 or so Ukrainians dead right. as a result of it. But it was, a, it was an impossibility to begin with. And if the United States had been, and by US, I mean this small coterie of uh, people who have been plotting this for years, including Biden, Newland, who is now on her way out, Sullivan, Blinken. Well, where's where's Newland now, Jeff? I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. She's, uh, she's on two her, blocks uh, from you at Columbia. She, she's she's <laughs> on her way over, I'm told. Uh, <laughs> so uh, this uh, whole approach uh, has uh, not had uh, any possibility of, quote, success, even if you define success in their terms, which for me was not success. But it hasn't had any chance. So in that sense, uh, the defeat was right at the start. The question is, how bloody would it be? How much would it escalate? As President Putin has said, absolutely correctly, by the way, he said this is tactical for the West, but this is existential 
for Russia. Right. That is the most basic point. We have people here playing games. They consider them games. It's even the language of game theory. It's we're going to game this out. We're going to do the war games. We're going to see if we can win this thing. And for Russia, it's viewed by all of those in the political class as existential for Russia's security. Couldn't we figure that out? It yeah. was obvious. They can't figure out anything in this country right now in our leadership. The, the leadership is, is, is vapid. Let me take you back to um, Israel and Gaza. Uh, as we came on air, our friend and colleague Phil Giraldi sent me a headline that Jared Kushner, the former president's son-in-law, wants to get involved in investments in oceanfront property in Gaza. And I was Look, telling uh, Karen Kwiatkowski in a prior uh, podcast that here in northern New Jersey, not far from the George Washington Bridge, not far from you, is a synagogue that invited two uh, uh, Israeli real estate companies to come and make offerings. And of course, they're offering property that can only be bought by members of the Jewish faith, which is against New Jersey law. And then it turned out they were offering to sell real estate in Gaza. There's a word for this judge, but you can't use it on polite uh, television. So All I right. won't use it. Uh, it's, it's so over the top obscene in this context. So fundamentally irresponsible and gross that one is lost for words. Why, we're talking, is it, yeah, why, we're, why is there no Arab aid, Arab country aid, other than the symbolism of uh, the King of Jordan pushing a parachuted box into the Mediterranean Sea uh, coming to the Gazans? Well, all aid physically is blocked right now. One of the things that happened today, and I've been on email about this, is that the head of the UN relief agency, the head of the UN relief agency at a moment when I'm reading that the population is starving to death was denied entry by Israel. <laughs> so this is the real situation right now. Hmm. This is so-called facts on the ground. Israel has blocked uh, aid to Gaza. It is starving a population. It is uh, about to launch a, a, a military attack on the very place that it has pushed the Gazan people. There will be more massacres and bloodshed. But and will there be resistance from any state actors, military resistance from heads of state that have said enough, like you and I have been saying, and, and others on this show, and the millions that watch us, enough is enough. I doubt it. Uh, Egypt does not want a war. Uh, nobody actually wants a war. That's not crazy not to want a war. There is still hope, maybe completely in vain, that somehow the United States will have uh, uh, an iota of uh, humanity and decency remaining and put a stop to this. I don't think there's any hope for that happening from inside Israel at all. Uh, the Israeli government is utterly out of control and utterly murderous, but it is utterly dependent on the United States. And I don't personally want to hear one more time Antony Blinken wringing his hands or Jake Sullivan wringing his hands about, oh, we've warned them, don't do this, don't do that. Come on, you are responsible for this. It's not your hand wringing that we care about, it's the weapons that you are sending every single day. That's your job is to stop sending American weapons. That's what we need to hear. No more hand-wringing. No more excuses. No more telling us all the things you told Netanyahu. We know what he is. We know what he says. We listen to him every day. It's your job 
Mr. Blinken, it's your job, Mr. Sullivan, to stop American munitions going to do this killing. You um, uh, expressed a view that it's unlikely that state actors will get involved. Suppose Netanyahu does, as he's been threatening to do, attack Hezbollah. Will Iran allow that to happen uh, without resisting it militarily? And how powerful or sophisticated uh, is the Iran military and the weapons it has? You know, the strange thing is uh, Iran is very powerful militarily. Uh, and if Iran went into a full-scale war, there would be mass bloodshed in Israel and throughout the Middle East. Actually, the Iranians don't want it. They're not chomping at the bit for war. Uh, they've, in fact, faced so many provocations, so many assassinations, so many murders. Most people do not want war. They know that war destroys their societies. War leads to tragedy. Uh, war has no happy ending. Hezbollah doesn't want war. Lebanon doesn't want war. Egypt doesn't want war. Jordan doesn't want war. Syria doesn't want war. Iran doesn't want war. They actually don't want war. I speak to their diplomats. We're the ones that think war is somehow a natural thing. And Israel wants the war. Israel wants a wider war. And we've got enough dunderheads in our Congress that will always stand up and talk about war. And we have a government adrift right now. And Israel's trying to provoke a wider war. Nobody else wants it because they know that it's tragic. It's a disaster. It should be the normal State of affairs, by the way, that people say, how do we end the war? But we don't even have that in Ukraine, a war that has gone on for well over two years, killed hundreds of thousands of people. You don't hear one senior American official saying, how do we end it? And we have that utter fool, Senator Lindsey Graham, now back in Kiev saying, yeah, you fight on, because he's been at the core of this warmongering for a decade, back to the overthrow, to the coup, to the Maidan, they just love throwing Ukrainians to their death in fighting the Russians because they think it somehow weakens Russia. So this idea that, yeah, it's going to trigger a wider war. Well, it could, but I can tell you, no one wants a wider war except some of our side. And we've right. lost track about this because the U.S. is in perpetual war. Britain loves a war. But remember, Britain was the most violent country in the world for about 200 years. Fought the hell out of, beat the hell out of everybody because that's imperial mentality. But most of these countries don't want war. They want the United States to put a stop to its own arming of this bloodshed. It's not hard, by the way, to understand that because every few days a vote comes up in the UN Security Council and the US stands alone in the opposition to a ceasefire or to peace right, uh, or right. to a solution. We're alone in this. So yeah. we got to get our own heads on straight. We're the ones that prolong these wars. We're the ones that are talking about war with China. Are we crazy? We're the ones that have American soldiers in Taiwan right now. Are we crazy? Even if they're just for training, what are we doing? We're provoking. They're there as a, as a tripwire. One of them will get hit with a drone and uh, old uh, Joe or whoever's pulling the strings. Well, Lindsey Graham will say, Lindsay now we Graham. have to have World War III. Correct. It'll be, it'll be their excuse. Um, I know you don't like hypotheticals, but do you envision um, Russia or China getting involved militarily in the Middle East if, uh, if Iran is attacked by Israel? No. Uh, what I do imagine, though, is the whole world uh, uniting against the United States and Israel as the last two 
countries that are uh, in in this uh, absolute war I mean, mentality. What would it take for that to happen? It hasn't you know, happened it, yet. It's interesting. We we talk about uh, the China threat, the China threat, the China threat. China has not been in a war, in any war, for more than 40 years. And the last war that China was in, 1979, 1980, was a very brief uh, skirmish with Vietnam. Uh, and that had to do with the Cambodian disaster, which the U.S. provoked. Other than that, China does not want wars. The whole idea that China is this great militaristic threat is, again, uh, a propaganda line of uh, our deep state. It's, right. it's, it's another game. China is superb, actually, at saying, would you calm down? <laughs> Could everybody sit down? China's the one that brought Iran and Saudi Arabia together. Could the United States ever have done that? No, it wouldn't even uh, have been in American mentality that you bring two antagonists together, better stir the pot. That's better for the empire. But China wants it a completely different way. So what I would say is that if this war expands, what China and Russia will do is to bring the whole world along demanding peace. And that they will be very effective in doing. And the United States place in the world, which is just disappearing in in respect and uh, in what people are seeing, that will absolutely uh, end up with uh, us in complete isolation.